What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Civilization 5 India AI only battle episode 4. Yep, that, that's right. Just checking. Yep, 4 in my head. That sounds right. <laughs> we continue and we have another war. These wars, these ones are the hardest because they are... Look at the colour schemes. It is just, it's just purple and yellow or burgundy and yellow and orange the whole way up. Not useful at all, but this is Pandya versus British Raj, which I mean, I think they're all at war with each other now. I think Bengal and Gupta are at war as well, so... <laughs> yeah, British Raj have seen a bit of a sandwich. But um, their cities are still being burnt down from last time. So that didn't take long for Pandya to try and get their revenge. Maybe they can save this city if they're quick enough. Which would be... would be good. I've been told... Oh yeah, I was told I can add rivers. We will we will see. Um, it, I say we will see. If I can find the button, I will make sure to do it next time. But another city has been set ablaze. Where is this? Slow down. I'm also going to slow down. I think I went a bit fast last time. Oh, it was this one, but Tibet takes it back. I'm going to slow down. We, we can see everything. We don't have to keep rushing through it like I was. Um, there we go. Pratihara piecing out with Pakistan and Iran. Iran, not Iran. Falling to British Raj as well. Tatihara then declares war on the Mughals, who that doesn't matter. And Persia v the Mughals, I mean, again, not, yeah, Pakistan sort of closed off that space, so that won't matter too much for Persia. There we go, what's this, World's Fair, 35% completed, we will see who wins. As we saw last episode, there's no real clear winner at the moment, or clear leader, which is nice. You know, normally there's just one sieve that does so well, we can tell really early. So it's nice that that's not the case. Um, but what was I was talking about rivers. I'm, I'll, if, I'll add them as it apparently I can do it. Um, I'll do it next time. I forgot for today, but <laughs> I will add them. Um, and what we'll do is to make it fair. I won't do it sort of natural. I'll I'll just give every sieve kind of a river that sort of runs through. Like I'll I'll make a few big ones sort of run through everyone's territory, so at least everyone gets one. That seems fair. There's so many cities falling. I'm just missing them all. I'm sorry. There's a lot. It was this this one? No, that one's on the edge. I think this one was retaken just in the nick of time by Pandya. Pakistan and Persia peace out. Bengal has now declared war on Moria. And Siam v Vietnam is still ongoing, although no cities falling just yet in that one. Um, oh, this was one of them. This This fell from Vietnam to Burma. I think that was one of them. Other ones, I don't know, maybe this one swapped hands. That's probably, because I think there was three, so that would make sense. If it went both ways, we'll just keep an eye on it. It doesn't help, I don't really know all the names, but there we go. Mad has been captured by Gupta. Okay, so we can find that. Where's that? That was down here. There we go. Vietnam and Burma also piecing out. I don't know. Uh, an embargo. There we go. Do, do, do. Vietnam kept that city in the peace deal, which is good news for them. See what Bengal can do here against what remains of Moria. It's so weird seeing all these improvements that are now just in open territory. The borders will fill them up pretty quickly. As I said, there is, there's definitely more land being taken every episode than there is being sort of freed when cities are raised. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Marafi squeezed out another settler. They still have two cities left, very spread out, but two cities left. And there we go, a city did fall to Pakistan, which is this Tibet city, and they're also going to raise that one if Tibet cannot get their hands on it again. Which again, like I said, it's, it's, not, it's not the end of the... I don't think it's a huge problem. I don't think I can turn it off now, so... It's going to be a different dynamic to this game, but there we go. We obviously had the ancient ruins too. Which gave lots of sieves little early bonuses, maybe tilted the balance a bit. Pandya did just grab a city and it was this one. So they are recovering from their defeat to British Raj earlier on as Harappa attacks British Raj. That doesn't matter, they're too far apart. But Tibet, definitely under pressure. Tibet was a bit of a fan favourite early on, so this is not, not good for them fighting on both sides. But to be fair, Gupta's defending and fighting on this side that's pretty impressive too a lot of people joining against british raj moria marafi chola oh they've been very quiet for a while um, but that's pretty big 
They could put this city under threat. And that maybe Delhi as well, New Delhi. They've stolen all the Indian-like city names that you'd expect. That is... I guess they are sort of the colonizers, that makes sense. Two settlers still sort of lurking in the middle of the map, where there's this, still this sort of slither of space. Bengal and Moria piecing out already. Didn't lead to too much. I'm very curious as to who's going to win. I really don't know. I know Bengal's not going to win, so I'm not too... Well, you never know, but I'm <laughs> pretty sure they won't. So I'm not too invested in them winning. So anyone at this point, it's going to be exciting. I feel like I saw a random city in the mountains, but maybe I'm wrong. I think it must have been this one, which was already there. So no. Oh, Tibet captured a city. I believe that's the one that was burning down. But they've recaptured. It was. That's good. They'll keep hold of that then. It's the city of Jinj. Oh, Pakistan retakes that one. They're not burning it though this time. And the city of Jinj down here falls to Pandya. So they are now having more success as Burma declares war on Bengal. We'll see how that one goes too. And there it is, Marathi. Did put down their settler in the middle. I think it's actually Maratha. And then their units are Marathian units. So sorry about that. British Raj with their settler too. We'll see exactly where they put that. This city is going to go to the Chola by the look of it this turn. Which is a big blow to British Raj. But it also will probably slow down Pandya as the city of Iran falls to Gupta again. British Raj going to probably grab this one. And they've settled another city here too. As Harappa pieces out with Tibet in the north. And there it is, yet yeah, Madras falling into the hands of Chola who have been quiet for a while, so that's pretty exciting. And it would be good to have some yellow to break up all these red and red and cream some sort of bordered sieves that are getting <laughs> making it very confusing. If Choda could sort of split them down the middle. But yeah, this is not looking too good all of a sudden for British Raj, even as they add another city. They have two, four, six left. And I think there's a random one, maybe somewhere else, but six certainly here. And this one's under threat. Chola could do more damage as long as they don't Spread out, yeah, they're spreading a bit. You want to focus on maybe just focus on Delhi first if you want to be successful. But there you go. There's still some weird empty spaces in this map. I know the desert is not as attractive. Maybe once I put the rivers in, that will do better. Um, like I guess, but yeah, like I said, I'll try and make it flow through everyone's borders so it's kind of fair to a similar degree. Um, I don't want to give someone too much and someone not enough, but you know, it's pr pretty hard. But yeah, it's been suggested that I do that, so I'll do that. Vietnam with the Brandenburg Gate and Siam also squeezing in a little city here above Bengal, who themselves have squeezed in a city next to Moria. And there we go, the World's Fair is completed. Pandya will receive the culture increase, the free social policy, and the points for the Golden Age. And then free social policy and the Golden Age points for Gupta, Moria, Tibet... Pakistan and Vietnam, and then just the Golden Age points for, who's this, Harappa, Maratha, Burma, Bengal, British Raj, uh, Pratihara, and Chola. And Siam missed out, despite trying, and yeah, these guys didn't really put too much in. Just good. Also, Brandenburg Gate, that's a pretty late wonder for Vietnam. I guess we're starting to see riflemen, Gatling guns, cannons. We're getting through. It is on normal speed, not not quick. So, but yeah, I guess it's nearly turned 200. Been getting through. Also, um, once you get universities, these jungle tiles, which yeah, they do have them. So these unit, they're getting two science from a few jungle tiles. Certainly helps. I don't. Is there any area? Yeah, areas like this at the moment they're not getting it here because they probably don't have universities, but or the technology needed. But there is a lot of jungle still here, which could be good for technology. And there we go, Bangalore falling to Pandya. As Persia pieces out with the Mughals. And it looks like New Delhi here, the British Raj capital. And their coastal city is going to fall to the Chola, which is great for Chola. They pick their moment. They've been pretty quiet for most of this game, so they really, really waited their time. Picked the right moment. Ooh, ooh. Is this their turn? Is this their moment? It is not. 
Siam pieces out with British Raj. We have our first ideology, Tibet, going with the order order ideology. We actually never looked at the social policies. Let's let's do that now. Let's do that now. I just realised we didn't look at them at all. Well, here we go. Um, let's have a look. So, Mughals picked one policy from Liberty and all of the honour tree. Pandya picked all of Liberty and then four of Exploration, which of course is... It's okay. There's not much exploring to do on this map, but it is obviously... It is, it's fine. It's mostly bonuses to coastal cities, which... They have a few. Burma went Honor 4 and Aesthetics 5. Moria went Liberty 5 and Piety 5. Persia went from 4 from Liberty and 2 from Honor. India took 3 from Tradition, 5 from Piety and 5 from Aesthetics. Pakistan took Tradition and Liberty. <coughs> Sorry, the voice. <coughs> Going again. Tradition and Liberty 5. So best of both worlds. Quantity and quality, essentially. <laughs> Gupta, 5 Liberty, 3 Aesthetics, 2 Rationalism. That guy, I know it's just a small picture, but his eyes seem very... They just look like they're not there in this picture. Vietnam, 5 Liberty, 5 Honor, and 1 from Exploration. Pratihara, 2 Liberty, 2 Honor, 5 Piety. Marafa, 3 from Liberty, 5 from Honor. British Raj, 2 Liberty, 5 Honor, 1 Commerce. That's, that's a first. That's pretty cool. British Raj, of course, I guess. Commerce, maybe, in their nature. Liberty 5, Exploration 4 for the Chola. Tibet, Liberty 2, Honor 5, Aesthetics 5, and now 2 from Order as well. Harappa, Tradition 4, Liberty 5. Bengal, Honor 4, Exploration 3, and then Siam, Liberty 5, and Aesthetics 5. And let's just have a look at which religions are doing the best right now. 31 for Hinduism from India. I thought that was going to drop off with them only having one city left, but I was wrong. They're spreading that just fine. They are kind of in the heart of the map, so that does make sense a little bit. 24 for Buddhism from Maurya, and then it's 13 for Confucianism from Harappa. 10 for Pratihara's Catholicism. 7 for Judaism from Vietnam, and Tibet's religion, surprisingly, has not done too well. Although I'm not sure it's actually... No, it is Tibet. Okay. For some reason, I thought maybe they'd conquered the um, holy city from someone else, and it wasn't theirs. But no, that's wrong. They, it is theirs. Pandya and British Raj peace out. And yeah, British Raj will keep what the rest of what they had. But here we go. We should see Chola take New Delhi this turn. As Pakistan takes another city off of Tibet. And yeah, they're not burning them down anymore. So change of plans there. They are looking really good now. They might be number one, just by eye. They have a lot of territory and settlers, so we'll keep an eye on that. And there it is, the Chola do conquer New Delhi for themselves. And, ooh, Pandya and Harappa feed Pakistan. I mean, Pandya won't do much, but Harappa is close. That could at least slow them down, but even Harappa doesn't have a huge amount of units, so I wouldn't say that's going to go super well. Gupta conquering this city and now what does that leave? That leaves British Raj with three more cities and I would not be surprised if the Chola grab a few more. Bengal has lost their capital elsewhere to Burma. It's not so good. And they've also squeezed in another set settler up here. Siam now going against Vietnam again. Rematch. Who's going to win this time? It looks like Siam has maybe the edge, but they seem technologically equal. So who knows? I guess we could look, but let's not spoil it. We won't use the infoedics too much. Let's not overuse them, as Delhi is captured by the Chola. Not looking good for British Raj. Two cities left, both of them 15-18, both of them pretty desirable. Sure, Chola will keep, keep going, as will Gupta, and we'll see who gets them. Could be important. Tibet and British Raj now embargoed, so they will be having some money struggles. They were two of the ones that I think in the first few episodes looked really good, and it's just not gone their way, which is unusual. Normally they snowball and do pretty good, but yeah, Tibet's had a real fall, and British Raj is certainly could be lucky to survive the next five minutes of this episode. Potentially, Maratha just pumping out more settlers. There is not much space at all. Like, there's a little bit up here in the desert. 
which if I put a river through it might get a bit more attractive and there's this sort of desert space here again Harappa completes Taj Mahal Siam also squeezed the city in the gap from all those cities that burnt down which everyone's just sort of left alone which is fair enough I'm surprised we saw when we were going through the social policies a lot of civs were in the industrial era so I'm surprised uh, how far ahead Tibet was to get the ideology, but I guess they've built the three factories, maybe coal coal is maybe limiting some sieves, but I mean looking around this map there's a lot of resources maybe there's just not much coal never mind, there you go, we jinxed it um, get a second one, but Bombay does fall to Gupta first and that, yeah they went for the southern one, but this one may still go to the Chola and there we go, second ideology, Gupta going with autocracy, so not going the same way as Tibet. And Bengal recovers their capital, so they're not not done just yet. Also, I did see it and just forgot to go back to it, but Sri Lanka has been settled. Harappa's down here and Siam is about to join them, and Siam also grabbed this island here. Which will give them, of course, a lot of oil. I think there was actually oil on this tile if I'm remembering correctly that might be wrong that might be me thinking of this tile but either way Siam's gonna get a lot of oil out of that in fact, where'd that settler go? Siam? Did you just delete it? am I seeing things? I swear there was a Siam set maybe it was just an elephant I don't, I don't know I thought they had one it just just disappeared maybe it got killed I, just, I don't know it was weird third ideology and that is Pakistan also going for autocracy and here we go then the race to conquer the final British Raj city I'm assuming Gupta will get it if they go first or probably even if they don't because Chola don't have too many melee units in the area so here we go I think they're the first sieve completely eliminated they are and it's going to be burnt down which is, again is it's fine the map's filling up They'll probably resettle it later, which is the weird thing, but never mind. Persia versus Pakistan with the help of Vietnam. I'm not sure about that, Persia, but you do you. I mean, to be fair, Pakistan's not... For a big sieve, they don't have many units, but they are pretty far away fighting Tibet. And then Chola go order, joining... This is bad. I've forgotten. <laughs> Chola going order though to join <laughs> no I thought it would come to me <laughs> um, never mind it's what this tab's for Tibet Tibet and Chola go in order Pakistan and Gupta going autocracy I do see the Chola with great war infantry that's pretty pretty useful and the Mughals against Pakistan too oh maybe, maybe this maybe there is we never normally see a coalition of little sieves take down a big one but this this could be the moment there is some units around for the Mughals and Persia's got, sort of got some empty cities over here too maybe it could happen and Bengal losing their capital again <coughs> but yeah we're starting to see some of the bigger sieves emerge certainly Gupta is now looking actually massive I've just seen on the mini map how big they are now um, Pakistan's grown well Pratihara's looking pretty big Chola and Pandya in the south as well Siam versus oh there's another Harappan settler here either way Siam I think that's versus Burma they are still fighting Vietnam so that's just more of a mess in Southeast Asia as Pandya completes the Louvre and Pandya will be the third Sith to go with autocracy of course they won't get any extra policies the free ones that you get like some of the other civs got that picked already but that's fine Siam and Vietnam peace out and again no cities changing hands probably not great one of these three probably needs to take at least one of the other two out fairly soon if they want to do well as Pandya completes the porcelain tower they've been getting a lot of wonders in Pandya just added another one the city's at 27, I don't know if that's the biggest in the world, I would throw, okay, it's second, there is, um, Gupta have a city at 34, there you go, Persia did just grab a city, so they are making progress against Pakistan, there you go, Persia, good job, taking one city back, not sure that's going to put a huge dent in Pakistan's game, but we'll see, 
and the Mughals will probably distract them a bit as well, at least in the short term. Maybe capture a few workers as well, there's a lot, a lot of unprotected ones over here. But that will be it for today as we hit turn 200. So as always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.